It's been a while since my last Voxel devlog. I'm still alive to make another one before I disappear and then make another video again. Since then, I've been struggling with the collision detection, which is sort of a pain. And sometimes collision detection can scare people a little bit as there is a lot of complex math and there's also different methods for doing it. Even with complexity, we can still understand it and implement a simpler version for our Voxel game. And I'll also try to explain it as simple as possible so you guys can implement it in your own game engine or if you guys just want to learn how everything works. Now, before we strive away and start programming our algorithm, we need to think about what algorithm to use. There's many different types of collision detection algorithms out there, such as the SAT method, regular bounding box, and there's some other algorithms which are a little bit different for other game engines. Plus, we don't really have to implement all of the AAA game studio collision detections, but the most common collision detection is called swept AAB algorithm. There's not that much information on the internet about this, but the concept is very straightforward once you get the hang of it, as the algorithm is precisely made for calculating the voxel bounds without the player phasing through it. Whew. And this phasing problem can be seen with a lot of other algorithms that don't precisely calculate the diagonal direction of the player. But lucky for us, we have a little trick of our sleeves. And this is where the swept AABB algorithm makes its final appearance and shines like gold. Yay! Because it basically just predicts the collision based on some time factors that we use by the player's velocity and the static position of the object. Yay again! And at the and we pretty much use this time factor to properly move the player in the right direction and when to stop the player when it's needed. Now let's get into the code on how to make this algorithm and understand its functionality. So the first thing that we need to do is to find the player's bounding box and blocks bounding box in which all the blocks in the game will be encapsulated in. And why did I say too much box? However, it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is to find the minimum and maximum boundaries of our box and also implement some helper methods in order to move it. To see our bound in the game, if we press F3, you can see the red highlight around the player. This is the collision bounds that we're going to use for the algorithm. And if I look at a stair, the bounds outline for the block also shows. All right, now time for explaining the algorithm. We start off with a method called collide, in which we get the minimum and maximum, the distance between the two boxes that we are going to use to calculate the time. We are going to be computing this on every single axis as we are dealing with three dimensions for our game. And if we remember from taking calculus that the equation for time is distance over rate in which we're going to use that for our algorithm. Also remember that the rate is the player's velocity. This is the position that we want to move into or the direction that we want to move into. But they're not the same. Yeah, I know because velocity and rate in our game engine, we're going to be treating the same thing. Even though physics and rate and velocity are basically different things because they calculate the direction. But we're not going to get into that for right now. But really, all you guys really need to know is that time equals to distance over rate. And that's how we're going to be getting the entry time and the exit time for our algorithm. Perfect. Now moving on to the next part. Using the x direction or the x axis, we want to make sure that we are able to have a value or if the player is moving in that direction. So if the x is equals to zero, that means the player is not moving on that axis. Now, if the value is found on the x axis, we basically divide the distance by the time and we basically get the entry time and entry exit as shown here. We can think of the entry time as the space between two cubes between the motion cube and the static cube. And the exit entry of the motion cube and the static cube is pretty much the same thing, but just a longer distance. And all we have to do is just repeat this code for all the different axes, and we will have the entry time and the exit time for our collision. Yay, we're almost done. The last few filters are for the entry time. We are checking if there was a collision in the past in which we discard, and if there is a collision way in the future in which we also discard. And the last part of the algorithm is basically figuring out which direction was a collision detected, and we basically return a normal vector on which we can use to handle the player movement. Whew, that was a lot. Now, since we already have the swept AAPV collision detection algorithm implemented, it's time to set up the player movement. Specifically, we don't want the player to be phasing through any blocks no more, instead actually have a proper collision and not to get stuck. And to prevent the player from getting stuck is to calculate all the potential blocks that's in the radius of the player and to check if they are going to be potential collisions in the future. We can see how this works out with the three for loops are checking with the minimum and maximum values in the area for a box collision detection. This ensures that the player does not get stuck when traversing different voxels in the game, and it helps to calculate the collisions in a much more accurate way. Another thing to note is that when the player kind of goes diagonal or heading in a diagonal direction, sometimes the player can face right through a solid wall. 
And here's a quick illustration of it. As I brush against this wall, the collision does not go through, or in other words, the player does not face through the wall. And I can be able to keep on doing this, but there is a problem where, as you can see right there, if I brush to the wall on the side where I can face through, but I'm sure this is pretty easy to fix. Now to recap, because the algorithm is only checking one axis and is not checking for multiple axes that the player could be colliding with. But luckily, we have a way to resolve this problem by basically checking the axis at one at a time for each frame in the collision. Woohoo! And pretty much all we have left is basically to move the player accordingly in the direction it's heading to because we are now allowing the player to move in that direction because no collision was found. And with this out of the way, our player should now collide with the terrain as we have programmed it. Yay! And now, since we have the collision detection out of the way, I'm probably going to go ahead and tweak it a little, especially implementing the gravity. But now we can move on to more advanced topics in our voxel game. And be sure to check out my previous video on which I uploaded it my last devlog. And also, if you guys want to join our Discord community, I will have a link in the description and as well as the resources that I use to construct the swept AABB algorithm. Have a good one, everyone.